Hello, this is Max from the Technomancer, continuing along with the Crossroad tutorial videos for the Technomant uh, for and specifically the section on Technomancy. This is just a squid doing a thing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start this video with uh, prototypes. So prototypes, well, prototyping in Crossroads is well. If you've ever played the mod Compact Machines, it's a bit like that. Basically, you can take a build that is up to 16 by 16 by 16 and shrink it down into a single block. Once you've shrunk it down, you can't go into it or anything like that, so it's not like compact machines where you can go into it afterwards. Uh, but you can copy it, and in fact, you can copy it very cheaply. And you can make as, pretty much as many copies as you like. And then you can there are port that you can place ports in this block that will allow you to interact with it. So basically you can, so for example, if you wanted to have, let's say, a redstone circuit that acts like, I don't know, uh, uh, you could make some circuit or device where, I don't know, you have, just trying to think of it, let's say for some reason you need a circuit that's like a toggle latch with a pulse former and 12 AND gates in it. At some huge redstone circuit, and you need a lot of them for some reason, you could compact it down into this one prototype block and then make many copies very cheaply and easily. And you would only have to build it once and then just use copies. But it, it, uh, it, the ports can be for more than just redstone. So I feel like I'm sort of, I feel like it would be easiest just to show you. So first off, you're going to need a prototyping table. And you're probably only going to need one of these. And you're also going to need at least one prototype port, though up to six. And now you're going to want to place this down somewhere. Now, I could just place it here. That's fine. But I would make a recommendation. And this right now, this recommendation might seem a little pointless, but it'll make sense late, much later on when we get to fields, which is Find a okay. Uh, let me just fix this. Uh, okay, so this thing will affect a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. This is what creates your prototypes, right? And the way it determines where it's uh, where it uh, which it affects is it's uh, it, it it'll place itself in the negative corner. So so this is positive x, and that's positive z, and that's of course positive y. It will place itself, uh, it, this is basically, yeah, so what I'm going to do here, hold on, let me just build the frame of what it affects. So I've built this giant box to show you where the boundaries of, where, where, what the area of this thing affects is. Let me make it clear, you absolutely do not need to build a giant box around it. I'm just using this box to clearly define where the boundaries are, okay? Like I said, this thing affects a 16 by 16 by 16 cube, and it will place the, itself, and, and the cube, and the cube is such that it will, it, if you inc uh, if you increase the co coordinates of this thing's position by one, so increase the x by one, the y by one, and the z by one, that is the lower, the lower northwest corner of the box. So basically, it starts here. Which is up diagonally one from this this thing, and ends way over here. And that's a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. And I've actually used a chunk as a as a as a guideline here, because chunks are 16 by 16. So if if I place built so if I place my table so that it's uh, so that the area that it affects aligns with, aligns with the chunk, that makes it quite easy to see what it affects, because yeah, the chunk boundary will be the the area it affects boundary. So basically, my requirement is that what I build fits inside this gigantic cube. It's not really that tough of a constraint, honestly. Um, so, however, when you uh, put this in, and it should be noted that when you uh, put this into a prototype, you can consider that the top and the bottom, okay, it's going to copy this over into a dimension you can't directly access, 
And it, as it says in the book, in there it will have a solid ceiling and a solid floor. And the walls will, you can't place anything against walls. So it's totally allowed for me to place a gear against, against the very floor. Because when it's put inside the prototype, there will be a solid floor here. And I can also do that against the ceiling. But I can't do that against the walls because the gear will just pop off. There's no attachable wall there. There is actually a wall, an indestructible wall. In fact, it's made of barrier blocks, but you can't really attach anything to those. Uh, uh, or you shouldn't, anyways. You're not supposed to. Um, so, yeah. Huge area. And if I wanted to... Create a, let's create a simple prototype to, just to demonstrate. I'm going to use a, comp a ratiator here. This is a very simple prototype. Now these ports are the inputs and outputs of your system, of, of your prototype. This is the only way your prototype can interact with the, with the outside world, right, from the inside. Now it should be noted that there, as you can see, the, it only has four things that can go through. Redstone, rotary, heat, and beams. It is, of course, possible by, in, to, in, by installing other mods, make things like items and fluids be teleported in and out of, this, uh, out of the prototype. Uh, if you're a server owner that ha and your server has crossroads, there is a config file for, pro for crossroads, and in there you can disable any block you like from being allowed to be in prototypes at all. And it's against the idea and it's against the the intended gameplay for thing for items and fluids to be and to be and players and entities to be able to be transferred in and out of this of the prototype. Part of this is because if you allow items to be transferred out, you've got a dupe bug because when you copy a prototype, it doesn't actually cost everything inside the prototype. It costs a fixed it costs a fixed amount of copshoyum ingots. So if you were able to transport items out, you could just fill a prototype with chests of I don't know diamond blocks, copy it, and then pipe out all those diamond blocks, and that would just be dupe bugs. So please disable any blocks from mods in the config that will uh, that will allow th items and fluids to be teleported out or in. Uh, just it just disables them from being allowed to be part of a prototype. And if you try to use any of those blocks, the prototyping table will just say no, basically, and tell you why. Um, also, uh, just in just in case, if you're a, a server owner, there's also a config option to disable copying prototypes, so you can still create them, but you can't copy them so cheaply, which is sort of a catch-all for stopping dupe bugs. Uh, or dupe exploits, because if you can't manage to disable every way of transferring items in and out, you could just disable copying them for that incredibly low price, and therefore people can't dupe items that way. Uh, so that's another option in the config, so just know that these that exists. So in theory, the only way you can get in and things in and out are through these ports. So we're going to use two ports set to redstone. We're going to say, okay, redstone in. In refers to going into the prototype, okay? Redstone in. Well, they're already selected, so there's no point clicking them. And then we need to set a side. So let's just say north. And now if we look, there's a redstone port on the north side. And if I could do out, that's another option, but we want in. And now I'm going to have a ratiator reading this, all right? And then we're going to have... Let's have some redstone dust, and uh, let's put a lever. And what's this? This is 11, and we'll do multiply. So we'll say, whatever signal is being put in, multiply it by 11, and then we're going to have a second port set to redstone, and this one's going to be redstone out on, on the south side. So whatever signal you're getting, multiply it by 11, and output it. All right? Now you can only have one port per side, which means you can have a maximum of six ports per prototype total. All right? Two ports can't share a side. 
So it's a little bit, now the sides thing can be a little bit confusing. We've got redstone in on the north, right? Now when we turn this into a prototype block, like a finished prototype, it's going to be a block that we can place down, a single block. You might be thinking that, well, um, you might think that you would uh, connect on the, it's, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that, okay, on the inside here, the, the, uh, the, what you want to call it, the, the redstone port is on this face, so on the outside when I'm going in here, I should be on this side, all right? That's a trap that's, that's not, uh, not, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit confusing, but that's not what happens, all right? If a port s says north, then on the inside you connect to it on the north face, and on the outside you connect to it with the north face, all right? So that, so the, we're going to input a signal into the prototype block on the north face, and output a signal on the south face. All right? And the reason this can be confusing is if you look at this, you sort of in your mind think, okay, if this thing is like a ratiator pointing that way, that and that's that and that's what our prototype is acting is as, oh, we'll just uh, input a signal on this side and it'll come out this and we'll it'll output this side, but you remember these sides are a little bit confusing. That wasn't, they weren't supposed to be, they just ended up being a little bit confusing, I found. So actually you'll end up inputting a signal this direction and it'll come out oh, this way. All right, so this is a multiply by 11 ification device. It just multiplies the signal by 11, all right? So to create this, we're going to need some cop show you ingots. So if I try and type, we, to create a prototype, we have to name it, let's say, Malt 11, just for multiply for 11, and if I hit prototype, insufficient cop show him. Now the cop show him goes in this slot, the only slot that'll actually accept it. You'll notice it used three ingots. Every prototype takes three cop show him ingots to make. Now we've got pro uh, prototype name multi Malt 11. And you'll notice we haven't lost the contents here, they're still here. All it costed us was three cop show him ingots. So if I place this down, You'll notice it left my inventory, even though I'm in creative mode. That's intentional. If you want multiple of these blocks, you're going to have to use the copying mechanism from the prototype table, which I'll show you in a moment. Don't just duplicate the item itself. You need another prototype copied from that table, or it won't work properly. And now, like I, and now, if I input a signal here, let's just say signal 15. I'm wearing the modular goggles, so I can just look at this. And I try and output a signal, it's multiplied by 11. All right. Now do note that you have to read from a redstone port with a ratiator. Um, uh, this is actually kind of a bad example I'm using here, but uh, if I were to use, okay, uh, let me do a signal strength of one and I'll demonstrate what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. Actually, let me just use a keyboard. <laughs> um, you have to read from it direct with a ratiator itself, not redstone dust or anything else. So now we're putting in a signal strength of 1, and if we're multiplying by 11, we should get 11 out, right? We get 11 out. Now if I put a dust here, you'll notice that we're getting a signal strength of 1 out. Why is that happening? Well, <laughs> it's because you can't read from a prototype using redstone dust, you have to use a ratiator specifically to get redstone signal out. So where is it getting the signal strength of 1 from? Well, a prototype is a solid block, so it can conduct a redstone signal, so it's conducting the redstone signal from this ratiator through the block. So it's this is acting exactly the same as if I just put an andesite block here. All right. Well, if I put an andesite block there with a ratiator, signal strength 1 out, but with a prototype, it's not conducting, it's actually converting it, we're getting 11. All right, I hope that made sense. Now, uh, let's say I want two of these, because I have many, many uses for a single block multiplied by 11 device, so how do we copy it without, now, uh, now of course, I could just make a second prototype from the same template here, named again, yada yada, or 
but let's say I wanted to make a second one, and oh, I'd already cleared out the inside here. Do I have to rebuild it? No, you don't. Take an already produced created prototype and put it in this slot here. Press prototype, name required. Okay, let me name it uh, copy of malt 11. Prototype. Prototype copied. It costed three more cop showing ingots, and I've got a copy. And the copy acts identically to the original. Uh, it's perfectly fine to name these things to, to name the copy the same thing as the original. That's perfectly allowed. Now, if I want to get rid of a prototype, you should not just throw the item in lava. There is there are two reasons for that. One. It's a waste of resources. You can recycle it and get the cop showing and gets back. And two, it's a waste of slots. So what are slots? Well, you're only allowed to have a finite number of prototypes per world. It's not per player, it's per world. And there is a reason for that. The limit is, I forget it off the top of my head, I think it's 500. Hold on, uh, yeah, the limit is, is 500. And there is a reason this exists. It's because of Forge. You see, when you there is these prototypes are being copied into another dimension here. And that it's kind of necessary for them to work in any reasonable way. So while this block is placed down and loaded, the the, the relevant uh, copy, the relevant uh, area in the inside the dimension is also being loaded, chunk loaded. Forge has a limit to how many block how many chunks a mod is allowed to chunk load. So if there if I there were too many prototypes and they were over that number of lim that limit, they wouldn't all work. Now you can change. Now there are two little <laughs> sort of two weird odd oddities there. For one thing, you can change the limit for the number of forge uh, chunks you can have uh, chunks you can chunk load within the forge config. That's part of base forge. Also, but you can't change the limit for the crossroads prototype. I'm just not allowing it for reasons I don't want to go into. Also, uh, the default limit for chunks for forge is substantially lower than 500. So why was 500 chosen? Because the odds are that if you were to make 500 prototypes, you're not they're not all loaded at the same time, so you still won't hit the limit even with the default uh, chunk loading limit. Of course, if you want to if you really are going to use 500 uh, prototypes and you need them all to be loaded at once, turn up the forge config to 500 at least. So, if I so every prototype takes a slot and every time I copy a prototype that takes another slot. If I so if you just throw this item in lava, You've lost your prototype, but the slot is still reserved, okay? Don't throw it in lava. So if you want your slot back, there's a recycle slot here. Let me take this cup showing him out, just to show you. Put it in its recycle slot symbol. I got three ingots back, so I got back everything it took to make it. And that slot has now been freed up. Please recycle your prototypes when you're done with them. Don't throw them in lava. Or let them despawn, or put them in a cactus, or anything else like that. Okay. Odds are you won't even come close to the 500 limit, but if you're on a large server, everyone has to share that limit, so it's quite possible you will. And if, by the way, server uh, operators, if there's some inconsiderate player who's, I don't know, trying to mess with everyone by making tons of prototypes and throwing them in lava to tie up all the slots to mess with everyone. Hey, you should probably ban that person, but I'm not going to tell you how you do, to do your job. Uh, but there, if you delete the file in, in the in the world file, there's a file, there's a folder called uh, dim27. If you delete that, it will free up all the prototype slots. Also, all the existing prototypes will disappear, but it will free up all the slots, just so you know even if you've thrown your prototype blocks in lava. Of course, all existing prototypes will stop working and just vanish. <laughs> in fact. So that's prototyping. Now, there are, of course, other port types. 
than uh, uh, than just redstone. If it was just redstone, it would be, I guess, useful, but not that useful. There are other types. Rotary. Let's uh, point that north. Rotary is not an in-out thing. If I did redstone, it's either in or out. Can't be both. Redstone's in-out. Uh, not redstone. Rotary is in-out. And we'll see that we've got an axle here. And the basic idea here is uh, you can connect uh, a gear system through this, through the through this port. And only one side needs to have a master axis. You don't need both sides to have a master axis. Only one side needs it. All right. It's literally the same. Uh, it, it, this will liter this will work almost identically to just. It's almost like having uh, everything on this side of the port being connected through an axle to everything on the outside of the prototype. All right, that's basically how it works, except you'd have to imagine your axle is massless because there's no actual axle with mass. Um, directly connects. You can also connect beams. Uh, sorry, let's do the heat. You can have a heat port, and if I get a heat cable, sure, well, you can just uh, connect your ca heat cables through it, and uh, it's it's like, and uh, it'll be like having the cable on the outside, on the inside of the prototype, just directly connected to the cable on the inside of the prototype, through, except it's through a port, of course. That's also an in-out thing, because it's bi-directional, like rotary. Beams, uh, beam, oops, I didn't mean to break that. Beams, if I just set it to north. Beams is in or out. Can't be both at the same time. And I should note something that's a little important here. If you're, uh, if you are trying to, or if you're on the receiving end of the beams, it needs to go directly into a reflector or some other device that uh, receives beams, like uh, like a splitter or a prism or something like that. It needs to go directly into it. Don't don't have an air gap. That won't work. It needs to be directly attached. Okay. So so if I'm beam sending a beam out out of the prototype from inside, I then I can I can have an air gap. That's fine. But on the outside of the prototype. I'll need to have something like a reflector directly attached to that port. And if I'm having a beam come in, then on the outside it's fine if there's an air gap, but on the inside it needs to be directly connected. Okay? Going through a prototype does not add a delay, does not add a five tick delay to beams, but of course, since it's directly, since it's going into a reflector, the reflector or whatever other device you use will add its customary five tick delay. So those are the three, uh, sorry, three, four things you can put through ports. Redstone, signals, rotary, beams, and heat. And that is pretty much prototyping in a nutshell. Let me just uh, get rid of this. So you can compact large builds down into a single block. Uh, it's useful for things like if you're using, if you're having some system that, uh, does that does logic operations on redstone or mathematical operations on redstone? You can compact those down. You could compact down things that 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 split beams in specific ways, or or uh, or uh, or uh, do operations with redstone, like make it go through a sine axis and do this, that, and the other thing. So. You just can't like compact down a water centrifuge system because you can't pipe liquids or items in or out of a prototype. All right. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you actually uses the prototype system at its core. The next thing that specific device is the prototyped pistol. If I take this pistol here, you'll notice that in the top left. It's got a, a G, It's got a little overlay similar to that from the beam staff, and you would be right in thinking that I can use the that you can use the uh, the control the uh, energy potential stability and void control keys that you may have bound earlier for the beam staff with the pistol in the same way, same control scheme. Same 
control scheme. So what exactly does this pistol do? Well, on right the way it is right now, absolutely nothing. It's, it doesn't do anything right now. So to make it do something, we actually have to design the internals of this gun ourselves. You can this pistol is you have to sock you have to build a prototype and and craft and socket a prototype into this pistol. And the prototype will control how the pistol works. Right? Without the prototype, it's useless. So uh, so what can it do once we've put a prototype into it? Well, obviously, it's a pistol, it shoots bullets. Specifically, the bullets it shoots are just vanilla iron nuggets. That's the ammunition it uses. You can load an iron nugget. In fact, this, uh, in fact, even though I haven't put a prototype in this, I can load an iron nugget anyways. That's just shift right click with an unloaded pistol and an iron, an iron nugget somewhere in your inventory. It doesn't even have to be your hop bar. It'll consume an iron nugget, and now the pistol says loaded true. It's loaded. However, still doesn't really do anything because no prototype. So once you've loaded it with an iron nugget, you can design a prototype that will make it shoot. And the way you make it shoot is that there's specific rules that'll follow uh, that where under specific conditions you can there's an in there's a uh, you can there will be there inside the prototype there has to be uh, a rotary port in a specific side. And if there, and if while the player is holding down the right mouse button, uh, you uh, to fire you there is a, a speed applied to this in fact a, a, a speed applied to this axe in uh, this rotary connection it will fire a bullet now it, now uh, the fa the faster the speed the faster the bullet flies and the more damage it does at low speeds we are talking about something that might mildly concuss a rabbit at high speeds, we are talking about one-shotting the Ender Dragon. However, unlike many things in Technomancy, which only care about speed and don't and ignore energy completely, so you can get insanely high speeds for free just using Cop Shoyam gears, you actually need the gear. Uh, the the, uh, the gear does need the uh, the pistol needs energy. So. Uh, also, the magic thing is you can uh, be uh, supply the prototype inside with magic from a, uh, a beam cage, and it can also uh, 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 imbue magic into the bullet in the prototype, which will make it do an, uh, uh, that magic's uh, effect at the end, at the where the bullet hits. So, specifically, the prototype that you put in this thing. If I just uh, go to the section as the exact rules. Oops, I passed it. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. <clears throat> All right. The prototype you socket into it needs a magic import input port on the east side, a magic output port on the west side, uh, a, a redstone input port on the south side, and a rotary port on the up side. You should have all of these. Okay? And once you do that, you need to design a pro... Now, here's the exact rules that's going to happen. While you hold the... Uh, let's see here. Um, while, while you hold a pistol in your hand that has a prototype in it, and you have a beam cage in your offhand, which, which, let's pretend this beam cage has magic in it, which it doesn't. Every five, ever, uh, then the beam cage will constantly subtract its uh, the the amount of magic you've set the pistol to. So right now I've got it set to five energy. It would const it would uh, subtract uh, five units of energy from the beam cage constantly, and it will be and that magic will be turned into a beam that is inserted into the magic in port on the inside of the prototype of the pistol. Any magic sent out the magic out port will go into the beam cage. So if you're, if the machine, you, so if the uh, contraption you set up inside the prototype 
is, receives magic that it doesn't need, you could just make it send it back to the beam cage so you don't actually lose the magic, and thus you only draw magic when you actually need it. That's one way you can do it. However, uh, <clears throat> while you are holding down the right mouse button and holding the pistol, this is a little bit complicated, sorry, uh, <clears throat> and it's loaded, then for the net, then for the then, then instead, then instead of uh, then the mat, then the magic sent into the magic out port will instead of returning to the beam cage, it will be lost. Why is it lost? Well, it's not exactly lost. It's well, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, while you holding down right click at, with a loaded gun as well, then the first tick where there is a speed applied to the to the rotary connection the rotary port will fire the bullet but only if you've been holding down the button for at least 15 ticks so you can't spam fire this thing it has a minimum fire time of 15 ticks during those 15 ticks you will still lose the magic sent into the magic output port and during those 15 ticks, you can't even fire, and that magic is just sort of wasted. After those 15 ticks of holding down the right mouse button, then any magic sent to the... Then, then if there is a, a beam sent out to the magic out port, during the first tick after that, first, that 15 ticks have elapsed, uh, where there is a speed applied to the rotary port, then a bullet then... Well, okay. Then when then the bullet that is fired will have magic will will contain the magic of the mo of the beam sent while it was fired. All right, which is and uh, sent out the output port. And when it hits uh, either a block or an entity, it will trigger the magic effect. So you could basically shoot lightning bullets or healing bullets with potential or uh, or combined void potential with the bullet, which will kill everything around whatever it hit, um, or anything else that takes your fancy, really, uh, you could put on there. Or you don't even have to use the magic at all. You could not use this thing with a beam cage, completely ignore the magic ports, and just use it as the simply, and use only the redstone port and uh, rotary port, and just use it as a, gun, a normal gun. Oh, I forgot to mention the redstone port. Um, while you're holding down the the right mouse button with this gun, the redstone port will will uh, output a signal in, in into the prototype uh, of uh, let's see here I forget the number sorry of with a signal strength of two or if the player is shift is holding shift while right clicking a sh signal strength of one, so you can use that uh, that redstone signal strength thing as an indicator of, of when the gun is either valid to be fired or during that 15 tick charge up time. And, uh, and, it, and use, you can use the fact that it gives a different signal strength if you're sneaking while doing it to do things like, I don't know, configure some system inside the gun. I don't know. It's completely up to you. So I did say that you need to supply the rotary port with energy. Well, uh, unlike with the normal prototypes where the rotary port just connects two gears, it, it, it itself does not act as a gear. It has no mass, it's just a connection. With the pistol, the rotary port will actually act as an axle that has an, a moment of inertia. So it will, some of the energy in the system will go into the, into the rotary port and will be required to spin it. And the moment of inertia will be, uh, there is a very will be, uh, uh, will be, sorry, um, of a moment of inertia of 10. And the, and the bullets, and the, and the bullet that's fired will move with a velocity of the square root of two times the speed the axle is spinning in radians per second divided by the mass of the bullet, and that's in blocks per second. The mass of the bullet is 0.035. There is a reason for that formula, there is a reason for that equation, you can read about in the technician's manual, I'm not going to say it. And the, uh, and the damage the bullet will do is the, the, the initial speed of the bullet divided by 20. There is no upper bound on that number. If you can create a system that can 
every shot, uh, put enough energy in that axle to spin it at a at a, something insane, like uh, at spin it fast enough uh, so that the bullet goes 500 blocks per second, then you've just uh, made a uh, made a gun that does 25 points of damage. So, and there is no upper limit, like I said, so you could, in theory, create a gun that one-shots the Ender Dragon, but I haven't managed to do it, not uh, yet, though it's theoretically possible, certainly. Um, so I feel like I, I've, I've done all this talking, I should make a demonstration prototype to show you the gun in action. Let me just make one and I'll show you how it works. Alright, so here's a very si uh, simple example I made. Um, it's got a steam boiler set up, just uh, producing some rotary power. I'm using Kopchoyam gears just because uh, I want as much energy as possible to be available for going into the pistol itself. And I've got a drill running to, of course, use the steam boiler. And um, I'm not using the redstone port. I mean, I've got one, but it's not being used for anything. You could design a system where the redstone port is used in a variety of interesting ways, but uh, this one's very simple, just as a simple demonstration, so I'm not doing using it. I've got the magic ports, and, uh, and currently I've just got it set up so that the input goes straight to the output and I don't do anything fancy with it. I could have done all sorts of things like uh, with the magic besides just sending it straight to the output. I could have just, I could have, for example, siphoned up off uh, uh, some energy, a small amount of energy magic for use in a crystal master axis. So I didn't need a steam boiler, for example. But uh, I'm just keeping it very simple for this demonstration. And then I've just got uh, a gear going on to this uh, prototype port. Now, two things I should mention. This gear needs to be spinning clockwise, aka in a positive direction. It needs a positive speed, because if you look at that formula for how fast the bullet's going to fire, if you put in a negative speed here, it doesn't work. Right? The book specifically says explicitly, in fact, that it needs to be greater than zero, not other than zero. So, also, you may be able to reach speeds with this system uh, one you've just while it's still in the world here that are like let's say let's say you build a system that reaches a speed of a hundred, and then you uh, and then you put it prototype it put it in your pistol and discover actually it's only going a speed of seventy five. Well, the reason for that would be while it's still in the world before it's been prototyped here, this port is not acting as if it has an internal gear or an internal axle uh, with an I value of ten. It's only once it's socketed into the pistol that it does so, so you need to take account of that. So it's probably going to be spinning rather slower once I put it into the pistol. Uh, this system is just a very simple one, just make it spin as fast as it can, really. Um, I'm not uh, with, with a single boiler, not doing anything fancy like trying to aim for a specific speed or uh, store up a lot of energy and release it all in one uh, burst or anything like that, just something simple. Uh, and, oh, I should mention something. Uh, with the magic, remember, it's only the, all the, while you're not holding right mouse, all the magic is, that goes into the output is returned to the cage. While you are holding the right mouse button, if the gun isn't currently, do, if it's not, if it's not currently the tick where it's being fired, the magic is just lost. May as well have not fired it. It's only really while the gun, while, during that point where the, where 15 ticks have elapsed and the speed on this gear is greater than zero, that uh, that the magic being out, sent to the output will actually be used for the bullet. So it might be, for example, uh, a good idea, just to as a very simple modification you can make, maybe make it that use the uh, use the redstone signal as an in and a timer as an indicator so that during that 15 tick buildup, you just, I don't know, instead of outputting the magic back out and wasting it, where it's just lost, you maybe have some sort of loop with re of reflectors where you store it all up into one and then release it on that uh, after 15 ticks and uh, into as one large uh, uber magic blast or something like that. I'm not doing that here, keeping it very simple as a demonstration, but I could have. 
So let's make this prototype. I'm just going to name it basic shot. Could have named it anything. Create. And now to put this in our pistol, we just need to uh, craft the pistol with the prototype. Like that. And then I can also take out the prototype by putting the pistol there. Get the pistol here, and it puts the prototype in that slot. Or whatever slot the pistol is occupying, actually. It should be noted that just like you shouldn't throw these prototype blocks in lava, that'll waste a slot, you shouldn't throw a low a pistol with a prototype in lava or destroy it in any other means, because you want to take the prototype out first and then recycle it, and then you can get do whatever you like with the pistol while well, there's no prototype in it. All right, I've got a beam cage here that I've got charged up. So let's first uh, do something without the magic. Let's just uh, let's just use it as a normal gun before, before we start talking about magic. So it's already loaded actually from before. So if I hold right click for 15 ticks, it should fire. Okay. Didn't seem to one shot a sheep. Quite possibly because my uh, entire power generation in that thing is one steam boiler, which is also powering a drill. Right. If I wanted to get really huge speeds, I would want that could so that they you know could one shot a sheep instead of two shot it in this case. I would probably want to do something fancy. I don't know, have a lot of boilers or do something more interesting. Use crystal master axis with energy or charge in it, or maybe use stability a stability crystal master axis so there's no loss and build up a huge amount of ener stored energy with boilers and then release it all at once so you can only sh shoot occasionally but rarely but when you do it's huge or have some other way of generating a lot of uh, rotary right oh I, I feel like I should have mentioned this I forgot to mention this earlier uh, remember you're up you when you make a prototype I sorry I should have mentioned this earlier you can't put a prototype in a prototype. When you're building a prototype here, regardless of what you're using the prototype for, whether it be for a pistol or for being used as a block in the world, it will ref the table will refuse to let you create the prototype if, if I watch, if it's got a prototype block in it. Blacklisted block at position, so it's, it's sort of, the text sort of runs off the end, but that's okay. That's fine. It, that's pretty much the only message where it'll run off the end is when it's got a blacklisted block just so it can fit on the block position. Uh, everything else it fits. So it refuses to prototype because prototypes are blacklisted. And while technically, uh, I, while technically you could go into the config and remove prototype blocks from the blacklist, you will regret doing that. Okay, don't remove that from the blacklist. That one needs to be on the blacklist for various reasons, like ranging from that, where we'll start with, it will bug out in unpredictable ways where I'm not exactly sure what will happen uh, if you try and do that. Don't. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. It, no prototypes in prototypes, and don't try and change the config so that you can put prototypes in prototypes. Don't do it. So now we're going to use this with magic. Let's try, uh, let's try setting it to one energy, one potential. That's pretty noticeable. That's charge. And I'm currently holding it. And um, you might notice my beam cage isn't draining, even if I uh, put it up to a high amount. The reason being, I've currently got it so that all the inputted magic sent to the output, so all the magic I'm sending into the pistol is going back out into the beam cage, so it's like just a closed circuit where we don't really lose anything. It's only while I'm actually holding down the right mouse button that we'll actually use lose the magic. So, uh, well, until then, it's fine. So let's uh, fire it now. This is charge. And, uh, yeah, charge someone's lightning. And I could just hit a block and summon lightning. And, of course, because it's charge, if it were to hit a rock material, it would make it from instant block. I mean... Uh, let's, let's do some uh, other interesting elements. Let's uh, do a really high power uh, potential void that uh, kills plants and also mobs. Uh, let's see here. Let's, let's, let's hit this. Let's hit the strike near that donkey. Well, uh, we one shot that donkey. Also, grass blocks are technically a plant. It turns them into a dead bush. Don't, uh, yeah, um, technically a plant. 
void, uh, you, now you'd think that, okay, that's a sort of destructive, isn't it? Well, it's got void in it. Void is dangerous, sort of, man. Eh? I mean, void elements can do everything from explode violently to, yeah. The uh, closer you shoot the thing, the more damage it'll do. Hold on. There we go. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's try a really fun thing with void. I never showed this. I probably should have, just because it's fun. Let's do a stability void. Remember I mentioned what this does? Explosion. Now, of course, this is only a power 16. That's uh, not a particularly strong explosion. Uh, if you were to, for example, fire a, a power 128 beam out of a, a, a void potent, a stability beam out of, let's say, a reflector, that would be serious. Uh, very, very serious. Or if you were to do something like I mentioned and store up a bunch of uh, potential and void in a loop, uh, sorry, stability and void in a loop and then release it in one gigantic burst, that could also be serious. You'd be like, it would be like carrying around a pocket launch, uh, a, a, a nuclear, a nuke, and a handy nuke applicator in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I could, of course, uh, go pure void, which will destroy anything it hits, uh, any block it hits, including bedrock. <laughs> Only triggers once. The bullet isn't going to pierce in through infinitely. It only triggers once. It's not going to continue have a bullet that just keeps flying through and piercing. It won't do that. So yeah, that's the uh, pistol, which, unlike the staff, can apply magic effects on hitting a mob. The staff's beam, remember, can't directly hit a mob. It can hit a block though that's near the mob. Of course, hitting, doing pure void on a mob doesn't really do much. And just for fun, let's uh, let's try a healing bullet. <laughs> Potential heals, remember. Uh, that is the wrong letter. Uh, let me just uh, let me just hurt myself. Hold on. This seems like a quick way to deal myself a lot of damage. I don't kill myself. I might kill myself. I'm on peaceful mode. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Good. That uh, it's not a very strong potential beam, but it's healing me a bit, just because it's uh, doing an effect near me. You see, every time it fires, my health goes up. Also, it grows plants, as you can see. Definitely growing plants, what with it being potential. Hmm. And if I were to have a very strong beam, I could uh, instant heal myself. Well. That video, this video, this is going, that's wrapped up prototypes. Uh, the next video is probably going to be the last one of the tutorials. And in that, we're going to cover fields, which is a very advanced topic. The most, probably the most advanced topic in Technomancy. And the prototyped watch, which uh, is a prototype device that can manipulate fields. We'll get, which, well, you'll find out what that means when I talk about fields. Goodbye.